وضغط عيناي شوقا ولطيبة ذرفت عشقا فأتيت إلى حبيبي فاهدأ يا قلب ورفقا صلي على محمد السلام أو من شيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد we seek refuge with Allah the creator of all good and bad the evil the righteous the creator of shaitan most formidable evil to seek refuge with him from his calumny from his evil plot conspiracy mischief misguidance and darkness and by his name we start we seek Allah's mercy on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to want the same blessing for his household as he did for Anabi Ibrahim and his household we want multiple blessings on Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well as his household as he did for Anabi Ibrahim in this world among the all creations within the universe here and the hereafter I mean before we start off proper please I quickly want to I said it last last year but the organizer of this program will never I am not an start is it possible to call a degree holder first degree holder a PhD holder do you call do you call the first degree holder doctor it's not possible doctorate holders will be annoyed who stars is a professor i can have the professor of islam when my feet is god master and international relations i can have the ustaz professor of islam when my job is to produce money so I am Abdullah Hafiz Salahuddin Allah Tuhi. I want to stop to do that name. Organizer, Mark. Next time when you call me that, I want to answer you. Sorry, sir. <laughs> uh, I also want to appeal to ourselves, for God's sake, that we should sit because we want to listen to the story of our dead. <laughs> we want to listen to the story of our death. This death is not the story of the death as the sign by Allah, but the story of the death as planned and conspired by the enemies of Allah. So if you are listening to the death story, not the life story, shall we not be serious? Shall we not be listening? Shall we not pay attention? I beg us in the name of Allah. Let us pay audience. Let us give ourselves audience. I'm not going to bother you so much with, if you see me holding papers, I'm not going to read the papers. I'm going to summarize the papers. The papers, at the end of the day, will be published in one of the magazines that have been run by AIC. I think I'm correct. So the topic is Holocaust. Holocaust, one of the organizers I've mentioned here, is all about killing. But the first time we we'll hear Holocaust very prominently on the globe was when the Germans, the Germans, when they killed the Jews by incineration. And it was a mass killing, 
like they were killing ants, massive ants. That was how they killed the Jews. And the, the, the people who described the, the event eventually came up. That's why the Holocaust is in the dictionary. They said the Holocaust. There will have been Holocaust. But the real Holocaust was when the Jews were massacred en masse. Now we are talking about Holocaust in the house of Islam, in the lands of Islam. Something must have happened that is similar to that. We are now seeing those of us that are still alive. Massive killing spray on the Muslims. Massive killings on the Muslims. Not only killings, the Holocaust also includes massive and sudden destruction of the Muslim race. It is Holocaust. Not only that, it is Holocaust when all of a sudden, as we are here today, and you see it comfortably, all of a sudden, something just happened, and you lost, you lose your wife, you lose your children, you lose your brothers, you lose your house, you cannot touch your, everything was gone, and whether you find yourself, just somewhere in the wilderness, it is Holocaust. Holocaust has happened in the house of Islam. And because we now have a record, and the world is recording it, when well, you turn to CNN, it cannot escape the coverage and the lens of the camera of CNN, no matter what they want to do. Whether it is Al Jazeera, whether it is BBC, today the most prominent story that you will hear on the head, in the, you will read in the newspapers, and you will read on your internet the most gory story is the story of the Muslims being killed. On, good, on a very good note, may I tell you that by now, by now, let me start with Nigeria. I won't talk much about Nigeria. Because all of in the lands of Islam is the topic we are going to touch briefly, briefly on some of the lands. By now, forget about the propaganda that has been orchestrated by the media in the South and West. By now, the Muslims that have lost their lives in Nigeria, through whatever the program they call it, cannot be less than a million. And when you talk about losing a million figure population of a community, you now remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, whoever spears the life, spears the life of what? Of all my life, all the lives that I have created. Whoever kills the life has killed the lives that I have created. So now, a one life in Islam is equivalent to humanity. It was one life of Muhammad. It was not two lives. But look at how many lives that life has enlivened. So it's very important when you hear about life, you hear about precious, precious, not stone now, precious, precious. And in that case, if you now hear about hundreds of million or more than a million in Nigeria, in Meduguri, if you get to Meduguri now, if you are the type who want to find out, you will discover that, like about 10 years ago, when you are in Meduguri, you take some little data of the scholars, and you have 100. Today, I'm not inciting any, but please get us right. Today, you have less than 10% of the total population of that scholarship in Meduguri. Forget it. People say they are killing Christians, they are bombing the churches, 
That is strategy. Strategy. If I want to destroy you, I destroy myself first. Oh God. It's a very emotional topic. And the gathering here won't be able to capture everything. When they saw the refugees in Mali, the refugees in Mali, they were all Muslims. Refugees from Yobe states, refugees from Mebanu states, refugees from Madamawa states, no non Muslims. Displacements of the houses, of the families, and the loss of lives and the loss of properties, all directed to the, at the Muslims. Kaduna happened to be the orb of economy of the north, coupled with Kano states. Meduguri harbors knowledge. Those who travel around should confirm this. But today, the north is dead. Few that are alive are walking like dead woods. The economy of the north, because they hold and they, 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 they hold and maintain a very strong hold of the commerce in Nigeria. They are not industrialists, but they are commercial people. Kano, Kaduna, eh, they are commercial now in the northern axis of Nigeria and Nigeria, but today it is dead. In the north, 10 years ago, or 8 years ago, it was vibrant to feel that you are in the Muslim land and you are comfortable that you will practice Islam without hindrance. Today, in Medjugorje, you cannot observe your Salat in Mabu. Today, in Medjugorje, you can hardly come out for your Subway Salat. The same thing in Zaria, in Kaduna, cannot you just get it over it gradually. And it is not over until it is over. Before we conclude that Boko Haram is all about movement against non-Muslims, we should know who are the victims. Holocaust has come to stay and is waiting for the drivers out in the north. In fact, Shebi, you know very well, some of our children that are in the university, you now pray on, on a special note. Oh Allah, do not let them push me to north. Because the north is not safe. The task force by the federal government want to fight the Boko Haram, but the task force goes to villages fighting the harmless, the innocent, not only fighting, they are wiping them off the surface of the land. Holocaust. We should not be the victim of Holocaust. We are Muslims, we are people who believe in peace because our religion is peace. In the deen, in the life, and the Islam. The people do not get it right. What is saying, what is being said there, that, that the system, the ideology, the manner, the pattern, the view, the practice, the structure, the superstructure, the way, the belief with Allah, approved by Allah for mankind is peace. It's peace. We are people, when I was reading about the persecution of the Jews, they said it is only under the Ottoman Empire that they never suffered persecution. The Jews never suffered persecution under the Muslim rule, within the Muslim enclave, within the Muslim woman, within the Muslim world. So we are peaceful people. 
get it right. Those who say the North are violent, we four of us read in the North. I never saw anybody that touched me because I'm a Yoruba man. Rather, I made a lot of friends among them. Look, if you see an imaginary that want to snipe you, if you see an imaginary that want to knife you, you must ask yourself, what have I done to an imaginary? Alright? Everybody knows in this part of the world, whether in the East or the West, the most reliable people long before now were the Malams. Because they are Malams. You know the meaning of Malams? The Moalimus. Because they have the knowledge, Ottoman Gavodion raised the community and he raised them on the platform of Islam. When the colonialists came to Nigeria, when the colonialists, when the colonialists came to Nigeria, the only people who warred with colonialists because they rejected being slaves were the Northerners. Atahiru, it was no longer of Madafudu, but Atahiru in Kano was a, an heritage, just like an heritage of Madafudu. He was leading people to fight back, be with us. They love Islam. When they confronted them, they killed and killed and killed until they remain remnants. That is the lot. The people who attack, when the, when the Boko Haram, if Boko Haram is all about honest Islam, that is, if the Boko Haram is a movement to attack the non-Muslims, I think the best place they should have faced should be the east or the Christian part of the southwest. Don't you think why are they remaining in the north all these years? Why will our government not fight the Boko Haram off the ground? Shall we not ask ourselves if we are invaded by another country, should our country not be able to defend us? Let me stop here for Nigeria. We have an holocaust in Libya. We had it. It was recorded that within a short while, we lost 40,000 people in the time of Arab Spring against Gaddafi. In Tunisia, we lost hundreds of people. In Yemen, ah, you saw the Yemen protests. You know they work on our psychology because they did not give us knowledge. Some of us are saying, some of these Arab leaders, they are bad. They should be killed. They should be do that. If you have your brother, a Muslim, who observes salat with you, who suffers with you, Will you prefer a cavalier or a hypocrite to him because he's not doing it? The best you can do is to correct the man. Yemen lost no less than before they could the whole thing subside a little bit. Because the man Saleh had to resign. He handed over power to another man. But meanwhile, we had lost more than 250,000. Syria. Syria. I want to talk about Syria later. Egypt. Egypt, we have lost money. We have lost people. We have lost properties. And we have lost Astaghfirullah, our Islam now. Oh my God. We have lost money, we have lost people, we have lost properties, and today the most annoying, the most very heartbreaking thing 
that we have ever recorded and we have ever witnessed in this Holocaust movement is the loss of Islam in Egypt. I tell you, my brothers, we have lost Islam and they will never allow it to come back again. The Muslim brother would have been on the course for more than 50 years. Hassan and Bana, may Allah forgive and bless his soul, started the movement for Islam because they say they want their life on Islam, for Islam, by Islam. After all, this is a land of Islam. Egypt is a land of Islam. Before Muhammad, Egypt was a land of Islam. After Muhammad, Egypt was a, it's a land of Islam. We remember history of the ulama, I mean the Khulava Rashidin. How do you want to talk about the history of Islam today without talking about Egypt? Why do we have to suffer so much to leave Muslims in Egypt? But, you know, in connection with the previous lecture we've been hearing, New World Order, some of us must be weary. A lot of us that are educated must be weary. Some of us belong to human rights organizations. If you are not careful, you will be working as the enemy of Allah. I beg you. You will be working as the enemy of Allah. A department, I'm sorry, some of these revelations, we are saying it here because this is a Muslim forum. They are very full of time. All the human rights in the world, all the human rights in the world, human rights movement, are designed in the state department in the US. Three organs are maintained to fund the human rights movement all over the world, especially the Muslim world. And it was a design. The level, the, 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 could you imagine, as of 2008, Hogan in the White House and State Department has already concluded that al -Badai should be the president after the military took over. And when the revolution, what they call revolution, started, it was started by the labor groups. It was never started by the Muslims. The Muslim brother who just discovered that, ah, this development, if we are not careful, it will overtake us. Let us overtake it. So they quickly came up in Egypt. They were enlightening people about Islam. They were telling them that if Mubarak should go, then you people should look for Islamic government. And the people, because the grassroots of the Muslim lands are still the Muslims, they still believe in Islam. They are still honest. It is the elites, the Arab elites, that are mischievous. So when the election came, after Mubarak went, they voted massively for the Muslim party. They said they want the Muslim rule. And they won. They were talking about 30 year corruption of Mubarak. And they started accusing Morsi that you must finish the job and one year. Is it possible? It was a, cal is a calculated so that it will have problems. And so the same human rights that started the other day started against Mosi within one year. And what happened? It did not even last. They just they the coup d'etat. The man. They put the military officer. And the military officer is a coup d'etat. And a coup d'etat, according to the democracy, is a kind of democracy supposed to have said, hey, military in Egypt are forbidden. But rather, from the White House, it was a commendation. My king came to Egypt congratulating the military officer and they are telling them and they are promising them their support just because it was the Muslims that won. They have killed thousands of people that will never be reported. Those Muslims, you even see the clips, you see the footages. The Muslims are still annoying. They are still angry. Say, what is the problem? 
You say we should run democracy. Okay, we agree to run democracy. You say we should vote. So we vote and we add our government. Now you say we must not run our government. They cannot run their government because it is a Muslim government. Holocaust agenda does not accommodate Muslim governments. The Libya, Muammar Gaddafi had his own lapses, but do you see? If European stands and Gaddafi stands, and we are now talking about which one do we choose? Shall we choose European? Ah. The man that has been put in place now in Libya, he will remain there just like the man in Iraq that will never be allowed to do anything good again. Until they will say, let us come and help you. And when they came to help you, then the man they come to help you, they want to massacre you more. They can kill you, not by gun at that time, but by food. They can kill you, not by bullets again and again at that time, but by water. They can kill you, not by anything again, except by food. May I quickly remind you, in Yemen today, I'm mean, sorry, in Kuwait, Kuwait, when the uprising of Arab Spring, I will tell you about Arab Spring. When the uprising started, they called it Arab Spring. Kuwait quickly took a decision, say, ah, I don't want this trouble to spread. Then Kuwait decided to feed the citizens free of charge. He promised them he will give them food without paying the Kobo for 14 months in Kuwait. And he started the program. But unfortunately, you know, there are observers all over the place. Half of all the food in the Arab world are imported from Europe and America. They discovered that half of this food, you know, like I said, are imported. So imported food are brought in, and they now discover that this food is killing the Kuwaitis. By now, within the youth who circle alone, you are recording in Kuwait 37% who are diabetics. I'm talking, I am giving you whatever I give you is authentic. I have my sources. I, I, I went as far as even consulting USB past on this matter. I'm sorry, I'm an only man. I'm a trader. I'm... So, you can see when they come in, because they always create a situation where they will say, you will have to say, come. You know in Nigeria the other time, if I recently I had our president said, oh, I am helpless. I never know again what to do to deal with the Boko Haram. When you are helpless like that, they are all around you. Ah, uh, hey gentlemen, your excellency, Mr. Obama asked us to greet you very well. Well done for all the effort you've been doing. We see your sacrifices, but we can help you out. The military base will be established very close to Kano, Medugori, Yobi. We are not going to fight, but we will give you intelligence. They are taking over. Now look at Syria. Look at Syria. I want to draw your attention to the fact that all the cities that Holocaust is raging very, very high are the cities of Islam. In the history of Islam, Damascus, can you remember in the history of Islam, Damascus. You remember the Kulaba Rosidin going to Damascus, only was in Damascus. That Damascus is Syria today. Are you, have you forgotten what they did to Iraq? You know Iraq harbors our heritage. Heritage including the heritage of Anab Ibrahim. But when the Holocaust came, the Holocaust, you know, they went to the mosque. I saw it. I saw a documentary. 
They went to the mosque. They went to the main barry. The American soldier opened their trousers. They urinated on the Quran. And they say, Is this the book of Allah? Help yourselves. Oh my God. May Allah save us. They have destroyed Syria. If by tomorrow the war ends, the war has started. Do you get me right? If by tomorrow Bashar Assad had to leave, then the war has started. Another war has started. Because they have created the vision that will never end except by the grace of Allah. I can't imagine if I am Alawi and you are Sunni and you kill my wife in my presence, you kill my children in my presence, you kill my mother in my presence, you kill my brother, and then later on, you render me maimed and paralyzed. Will I forgive you? Even if I want to forgive you, I will not be able to forgive you. Allah Akbar. That is the kind of world they want to live. Syria, today, the refugees from Syria alone, as at February, what did I say? As at June of this year, June 213, the total refugees in Syria now just reported by UNO, and that is under estimation. You are talking about 1.7 million. And I can bet you that figure is like it's as lower as about three quarter. Even those who will not run away from the home, they are displaced. They have no food to eat. They have no water to drink. They have no medicine to treat their treat ailments. They are more or less like corpses on the faces of the land. The mosques are never spared. After all, it's only the mosques that you see all over the place, the Muslim lands. The mosques are bombed, shattered, destroyed, and wasted. The Jews who saw Holocaust have never seen this kind of level of Holocaust. Some of us in the southwest or the west, I will say, ha, Sabina Mala, they are killing. What's our problem? When they finish with them, after they are called the Ajalo, Katoa Fia above Skinny, Fed Dia, Ejakale Ajalo, Katoa Fabo, Fed Dia, Tredia, Okiri, Ajay, and Libruji. My dear brother, Holocaust has entered into Saudi Arabia. The uprising is already, is, it has already started. Three reports from international level confirmed. When I saw one, I could not believe it. I met him, I called a friend, he confirmed. I said, What's happening? They said, There have been a demonstration in Riyadh. And a woman there now did not cover her head, though. And the woman is a Saudi. And the woman is now saying that freedom for women. That is democracy. Let me quickly tell you that is the meaning of Arab Spring. You know they call it Arab Spring, it is not Islamic resurgence. Don't you remember that in the past, when our religion has to be revived, we will hear Islamic resurgence. When our leaders have to be taught to, to go away from the throne, we will hear about Islamic revivalism. When we want to change society, we hear about Islamic revolution. But today it is Arab Spring. The term was granted for the first time to the people, the human rights house, by the Americans. The coinage for the movement of democracy. Now a woman is moving around. And a man stood up in Riyadh and he was asking for free life from the government of Saudi. 
I'm not in support of monarchy. But I'm not, I will never, I'm not, and I will never support secular democracy. Because it's antithetical to Islam. The man was repressed by the government of Saudi. But later on, it was a higher movement, and greater movement, and larger movement. And today, may I tell you last year, for Saudi to save, to feel safe, and feel secure, 136 billion US dollar had to be expended to repress the Arab Spring in Saudi. Those who collected the money will go and reinforce. It will no longer be the same again in the next 10 years in Saudi. And don't be surprised when it will come a time, may Allah forbid, may Allah forbid, may Allah forbid, they will tell you. This year, there's no Hajj. There's no Hajj. Maybe you never know. By what? Oh, maybe you never know. By what standard, by what method, by what strategy do you use to get mammoth crowd on the feet of Araba? What advertisement do you run? If Olympic has to take place, don't you know how much they spend on PR, advertisements, promotions, publicity, corporate affairs matters, but you go, all of you all over the world, you go gather yourself, and you gather yourself successfully with all this, and you are showing to the world you are one. They never like that. They never like that. Sometimes, and somehow, by the agenda of the Kufar, and by the stupidity of the followers of Islam, I beg your pardon, by the ignorance of the large number of us, you may not be surprised if they wake up one day and they just drop a bomb on Arafah. Because the only defense in Saudi is in the hands of America. Except those who are ignorant of the defense of the world. And when they said, I read one report, and they were telling us that, look, for more than, for more than 20 years, they sold a weapon to U Saudi Arabia. And the weapon was, that time, 40 billion US dollar. And but for once, Saudi had never used the weapon. It would have become obsolete. And if a renewal of it, you still need their attention. And the other time, they were selling our wax to them when our wax was the talk of the town. And they were telling Saudi authority, you cannot use this one against Israel, but Israel can use atomic bomb against you. Uh -huh. Holocaust agenda, man. <laughs> Allah Akbar. My dear brothers, when you go to this country, in Tunisia, the man who started Arab Spring, or by what, or by that man that Arab Spring started. There had been a, a program, there had been a plan long ago, but one man was used as a reason. His name is Muhammad Bu Aziz. Muhammad Bu Aziz. Just to tell you that Arab Spring does not have anything to do with Islam. Muhammad Bu Aziz was a graduate and he could not get a job in Tunisia. And one day, he thought of selling wares. He was selling some of these little, little things around. Then, the police come around, came around, they took the wear from him, that it was not correct to sell around this place. The next thing Bu Aziz would do was to get gasoline. He got gasoline, he poured it on himself and he set himself ablaze. Can you do that as a Muslim? No. Is it correct to do that? Sorry. Is that the way to correct the no, to fight the government that is not giving you job? But that is the sacrificial lamb for the uprising. You have to pay the price. There must be a reason. Either we will bump WWT so that we will fight the terrorist terrorism. Or we will say that he is developing nuclear weapons in Iran so that we could go into there must be a reason. And so they started in Tunisia. But Tunisia, 
after all the troubles, after all the deaths, after all the losses, the Muslims also arose. And Nada, Nada party, I knew about Nada as far back as 82. Ganus was the leader of Nada. He was very, very erudite, very scholastic in Islam. And he pushed that Nada should engage in election. Nada won election in Tunisia. And Nada became the ruling party. But just a month, all over the international media, they were criticizing Nada. Nada will bring Islamic fanatism. Nada will turn every Tunisian to Muslim. Nada will not be able to perform. The people in Tunisia should ask questions. And so Nada is in every sense today. I don't know what is even happening to it right now. It's a complex thing. But we need to sensitize ourselves to know where we are, what is happening. So, you can see how it's all... You know, the other time they went to Afghanistan, Remember, they said they wanted to go and liberate Afghanistan from the terror and the oppression of the Taliban. They did that, I think, 2002, 2001. God bless you. What is our 2000 today? 2013. America is leaving Afghanistan by next year, absolutely. But they are not going. And Afghanistan is worse off. Afghanistan is, has become more enslaved. All structures, all infrastructures in Afghanistan have been destroyed. Scattered are people. I watched one document on CNN, CNN for that matter. The soldiers from America in Afghanistan were calling the children to come and enjoy. And when they will reach their place, they will sing American song to them. They are capturing their minds so that they will become American by orientation and nominal by Muslims. They are giving you sign. The other time, one of our students was wearing a job on the road to the school. And the teacher stopped in and the teacher took her to the school and the teacher gave her 40 strokes of lashes they were expecting you to rise and they were expecting to bump but you know they were defeated by their expectation they were expecting you to fight they were expecting to fight you they always put focus the other time in the documents in the in the in the new world order lecture i told you the Rothschild family who controlled the entire civilization it has been confirmed beyond reasonable doubts even documents in the uno has confirmed it there is a roach they call it rich child family that controls the civilization of the world and they are watching you all over Buy your ATM card, buy your GSM system, buy whatever you think, Yahoo, Yahoo. We all lost our air. Eh? Oh my God. The technology that they have developed, the primary intention is to save their soul and to destroy the other souls. Ha, my God. You say your children must not watch nude, nude films on your TV. I mean, you have said this. And you do child lock. And you do not buy from pornography magazine to your house. But your child must use phone, no? Your child must use phone. And your child must go to school with phone. And before you can do that, then you must go. <laughs> Tablet, ah, so many of that now. And your child, you know, you are even proud that my child must use a very sophisticated phone. 
Because by that you feel it is a way of civilizing him. Yeah, it's also a sophisticated way of destroying us. You know now that uh, the matter of sex and sacredness in sex is lost. It's lost. So, you now imagine, Libya was one of the best oil exporters in the world. The oil in Libya does not require rigorous refining. How many years now it has been shut down? It can't come up easily like that. The person they put on the throne there now, they know he will not have it easy. How many years they installed a president in Iraq? How many times have you heard about bombings, killings? It will go on like that. Because the Rothschild family who owns the civilization said, your population now is 7.7 .7 or 7 point something. And the best population figure we can enjoy is 1 billion. 1 billion. You know, some of our elites also say they don't want children, though. Because when they have children, they will disturb you. They, you will spend money. You will trouble so much. You will run around, have to run. What is it? Clinton has two children. Eh? Obama, two, two children. After all, this one. <laughs> we thank Allah. May Allah continue to bless the soul of Muhammad. The Jews were decimated. They were decimated so much that by 60, 70, the total population of the Jews in the world was about 50,000. Even for the system of self-defense mechanism that we have in Islam, that we procreate, we will have been forgotten. Wallahi, we will have been forgotten. So this is a very gory picture we have around. And now, some of us who go to Libya for scholarship before, you cannot go there now. Some of us who go to Egypt for scholarship now, tell her, tell her, tell her, you cannot go there now. Some of us who go to Bahrain, eh? Iraq, ah, Iraq, Iraq, Iraq. All the scholars of Islam can never excel there in Iraq. Iraq. Can you go there now again? Hey, the Holocaust will take knowledge from you if it cannot kill you. The Holocaust will take food from you if it will not kill you. The Holocaust will even take your wife from you if it cannot kill you. And lastly, you can see it. It takes our children away now. Our children are opposing to the Muslim values. They say, no, that, 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 that. No, it's too much. It's too much. What's it? And it's all right like this. I observe my salat. What's wrong in watching nude? What's wrong? What's wrong in not covering my bosom? And I don't want that. I don't like to be fanatical. have to be careful. I do not have formula because there is no time, even if I have here, to tell us how we can stop the time. I am putting the question to all of us. If you know you are being killed, we have to be very careful. Zimbabwe the other time drove off the farmers. They said the man was mad. He was not mad. He was not mad. He discovered that they came to destroy people by food. Those Zimbabweans farmers, the Europeans that were driven off the Zimbabwe went to Kuala State. Bukola accepted them. Our traditional farmers were running their lands with a natural way of farming. They were running their own. Their own will produce about 10 times the product, the volume of what our traditional will produce. But their own will kill our traditional with life we are living. Things are bad. I don't know. When you think so much about it, you get to, if you are not careful, you run basak, basak in your psycho. And you say, 
Why should this be? But let me quickly tell you. Allah has never promised us that we will be like this. And Allah has never disappointed us that we are the way we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he is never oppressor to his slave mm -mm. more so Allah has promised so what are you talking about he said it is compulsory that we must prevail over the enemies but Allah will not support you if you collaborate with the enemies. Why do we have to get Arab Spring? When Arab Spring is all about, forget about Sharia. Forget about Islamic culture. Go to Qatar. When you enter Qatar now, when you enter Qatar and you see Qatarian and you say, you ask yourself, what is the problem? Is this a Muslim land? Have you not seen on Al Jazeera when they advertise about Al Qatar? A cut on her line, a woman put on cap, Arab, that we only saw their eyes, not to talk of their faces. And the hair is open, and she wore, she will wear short skirts. Don't you know that the Arabs have betrayed God? The Arabs have betrayed God. So, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We are in Odetum, Odne. Whichever turn you turn, we turn. Whichever turn you turn, we turn. If you see forgiveness of Allah, Allah give you. But if you seek collaboration, you seek collaboration with the enemies of Islam. They are importing wine into the yard. They are importing, when they were fighting the, the Kuwait war, the American gave them order that they should bring alcohol into Iraq. I mean, into, into Riyadh. And they were importing women for sexual atrocity. Because the soldiers of America who are fighting on behalf of Saudi who can never do without having sex. And they have to take alcohol. They have to take drugs. And when that, when that will happen and the, and the soldiers will go, who will take care of the alcohol that remains? So, I don't want to paint a despicable picture we find ourselves today in the world. And so that we love a little. And look at that law who has said that. Look, you will not help the matter. If you still continue to dance, they are dance. Can you hear me? If you continue to sing, their song if you continue to read their stories and you never know anything about Surat al Baqarah, they are not happy matter it is not only in Ramadan people should read Quran and we are advocating I stood my day my people in Hatum when you finish reading the Quran first time because there are some of them that can read very very fast the next time then the third time I don't want to see you reading it without meaning until we read what they are doing to Iran. What is good for the goose is good for the Ganda. Let me quickly run this again. Israel was established by force in the heart of homeland of Islam, which was Palestine. It was Palestine. What you call Israeli today was Palestine. And in 1948, the United Nations, in collaboration by the Jews and by, by the Rothschild family, concluded the matter and executed the matter in the face of all the Muslims of the world. Because around that time, you Muslims collaborated with the European to destroy the Ottoman Empire. So you now break into yourself into pieces. I am Saudi Arabia. I am Kuwait. And UAE, I am uh, this Bahrain, Oman, 
Look at the old collection of the old country around that place. They, uh, uh, Syria. Look at all of them. They are now up to how many millions? When they broke us up, then they have destroyed us. But remember in United Nations and United States, how many states in United States? Eh? 50 so 50 what? <laughs> You don't know that they are very intelligent. But we are more intelligent than them. Why don't you continue to wonder why Europa is talking about unity of the euro? Why do you not remember that it is better to talk about the Muslim spring? The unity of the Muslims. Such that, just like they see you in Mecca, in millions, at a time, doing the same thing, saying the same thing, acting the same way the same manner the same dress they will fear that these people will can penetrate them if you collaborate we are talking about our the situation is so bad that majority of the arab world today are refugees refugees in house refugees outside and unfortunately, because it is the Arab matter and the Muslim matter, the international community never talks about supporting them. I told you I won't be able to read the papers. Let me quickly round off by telling ourselves, because we are all part of the show. We are all part of the show. The same agenda is on all of us. Don't think uh, it's not my turn and it's, I'm not part of it. They see me now. If you like, you can trim your beard fine. If you like, trim your beard. But if you trim your beard, you will go to the mosque. And when they want to bomb the mosque, they will not, never separate those who wear the beard and who do not wear the beard. If you like, you can say I will not wear a hijab. Wear trousers. Go and use small scarf and observe salat. When they want to target the most, they will kill off everybody. A lot of things as an agenda that we suppose not to be talking here have to be put in place to stop the tide. But let me quickly mention one well, few things. Wallahi. You remember the people in the past, our forefathers, right from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's why I say Allah never disappointed us. We have disappointed ourselves. I read in the Holy Quran. He said, Allah said, if you are hundred it, and I was shocked. Allah says, if you are hundred, you are going to finish off one thousand. If you are hundred, formidable and firm. Believing in me, the controller of all forces. You are hundred, you will finish one thousand. Would you really see this? When they faced the Kufar in Badri, they were 313. They finished off over 1,000. They did not have the weapons very strong. The enemies had everything, but they finished them off. Why? They were united. They loved themselves. They prayed for themselves. They never hate themselves. They were focused. They were patient. Another time he said, even at a time you are weak, when you are weak, your human is going gradually. He said, if you are 1,000, just take it from me. You are going to finish off 2,000. So there is no place in the Holy Quran that Allah says you will be finished. You must have signed the finished warrant that we want to be finished. And we need to change that warrant now. We should love. First thing, well, like, there's no way we can move away from this agenda. So those of us that go to Arab world, they will say, ah, I say, Allah, Baba, come. Say, Bye. what is wrong with you? Don't you know that Arab has left Quran for long and they are now looking at democracy books? And they are now looking at democracy books. There is one snag in democracy that we have to be weary our Islam is all about everything. It has taught us about governing. It has taught us about family. It has taught us about war. It has taught us about peace. It has taught us about neighborhood. It has taught us about the industry. 
It is a complete thing. Even with the way you smile and the way you cry. The way you get angry and the way you are patient. The way you love and the way you hate. So if you have everything, Aliyom, Atmantu Lakun Dinaku, Atmantu Aleku Nimati. He said everything you need, comfort, comfort about this world, you should seek it in this Quran. So, first thing we do is to study this Quran. We are not studying the Quran. If you know Quran, and we should not bother. Let's all of all in our own area because if you are expecting Larbawa to come and teach us, Larbawa are not looking at the Quran again. They are looking up. You know when they were fighting in Libya, they particularly call on United States to come and help them out. He will call the Bible, will not dictate the tune. It will. So let's study Quran. Let's know what is contained there. Practical. Then let love for ourselves. Then there are action plans. It cannot be like this. I read about the establishment of it. State of Israel, and they told us gradually when the they were driven off in Germany, the Jews were driven off, and they were thinking of where to go. Some of them scattered all over. Some of them, the leaders among them now say we must establish a state. They thought of Uganda. The Uganda was rejected. They then said, Let's go to Palestine. And when they wanted to go to Palestine, what they were doing was gradually they were giving money to the Arabs. They were buying their lands. They were buying their lands. But what is it? I will go left. I don't really know. Left. Masala Simo. Apology to our only. I'm sorry. Yes, you sold off all our lands, and our children could not go to school. Thank you. So, by the time they were buying the land, they never knew that the Jews were trying to take over. Uh, you see, there is just like the same thing all over the place now. Go to Ifo, go to Sango, go to everywhere. The owner of the land will say, "Emo, I want to call you on the leg. 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 So that was the, how they started. Maybe you have to employ strategy too. If you want to come back, because we are down now, we are down, really down. We are down. All the Muslim countries will not be able to procure weapons now, except they have to collaborate and bend down to the Kufar. And who will give them the condition? Russia was supplying weapons to Syria. Eh? The rebels were taking weapons from U.S. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, who will rule the country? Either the Russia or the Western powers. We need to sit down and strategize. But we cannot strategize because the way things are now is as it's our community is smacking of massive ignorance of our history. And until we change, until we change, I am fear, I'm having a lot of fear about my children. That okay, if I can secure myself from the turbulence of the Kufa, the onslaught, the, the, the only thing that they can do to us, people like us now, is to kill us. They, we cannot compromise. But what about our children? Who will protect them? You have to create an environment that will protect them. Egypt now, 50 years I told you the struggle of Muslim brotherhood. They got the victory. They destroyed the victory. May Allah save our souls. We welcome contribution from our audience who will tell us how to stop the tide. Salam alaikum. We thank him for that heart rendering, soul tasking, and message filled lecture. Now, there's going to be a time for contribution as well as questions and answers. But we would like to introduce the AI, um, the um, youth segment of AIT, AIC rather, AIC as a youth project. It's called Be My, the best of mankind youth. And to introduce Be My to us fully is Brother Abdul Hamid Abari. 
I welcome Brother Abdul Amid Abayi to the podium to tell us about BMI. Engineer, Engineer Abdul, uh, Abdul Hamid Abayi. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> um, my name is Abari Abdul Hamid Olu Adam Lola. I'm not an engineer, I'm still fresh out of school. Inshallah, by the time I get a job and I've done like five years, I'll become an engineer. If you should please pray for me. So why I'm actually here is to present BMI. BMI is a youth project facilitated by AIC with the vision to prepare Muslim youth for the future and a mission to empower Muslim youth with um, special personal development skills that will help them realize that they are actually the best of creation as, as stated in Quran 3 verse 110. That's Surah al Brown. Imran. Now moving on to our objective. The objective of, as we all know what objective means, objective it means to achieve a particular aim or a goal. Now, we might have some objectives, up to five, that will be shown on the slide. But before we can achieve this objective, there are some challenges that our target group, who are the, the youths, are facing. Now, what I'm going to be doing is, I, okay, they are sharing the flyers now. I would employ you to please follow me as I explain the objective and relating it with the challenges being faced by Muslim youths. Now, for those of you with the, um, with the flyers, the first objective is to bridge a gap between Islamic education, I mean, Islamic knowledge and Western education. You will all agree with me that 75% of Muslim youths are ignorant about Islamic um, knowledge. And they are actually lazy to learn about it. Now, there are two ways we can, um, there are two people that are at fault. First are the parents and the youth himself. Now, the parents, from the kids, from the childhood of this youth, this child was exposed to only Western education, and the parents do not um, pay, they pay little or no attention to Islamic education. Now, this is a problem because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best of gifts you can give a child is, is knowledge, I mean, is education and good upbringing. Now, if you don't balance this education, you, it, there will be a fault on this child. Because when you teach the child just the Western education, he, will, he knows only ABC and the next. He knows only ABC and the rest. Why is Ali Batasa is in trouble? Now, having said that, to the youth ourselves, with the century we are in, we are in the pool of knowledge. You don't expect your parents or your alpha or your stars to still now bring a cup while, you are, while um, information and, and knowledge is pouring on you to still carry a cup and still come and feed you with water to drink. It's not possible. We need, to, we need to be aggressive about learning about Islam. Our parents have played their part, but we can't blame them all for, for our default. We equally have our own problems. Now, having said that, um, moving on to the next objective, the next objective is to prepare Muslim youth for the future. I'm not following what is on the, on the flyer as it is stated, but please just try and follow me as I'm saying it. The next objective is to prepare Muslim youth for the future. Now, before you can prepare someone for leadership, I mean, the next objective is to prepare Muslim youth for leadership roles. Sorry about that. Now, I, I can't, you, you can't prepare a youth for leadership role who, when he's having a fluency complex. This, this child is feeling inferior. If he's in the midst of his fellow Muslim brothers, they can shield his secret and help him become a better person. But when this youth is in the midst of, of the, the, the youths on the non-Muslims, and there's an argument about religion, what happens is that this child tends to shy away from arguing. And he will give excuses like, I don't like talking about religious matter because they're very sensitive. Whereas it is because of first, the first problem that this child has is not knowledgeable enough. He does not know much about Islam. So instead of him trying to at least even defend himself, this time he is now, you know, hiding on the influence that he's a gentleman, he doesn't want to argue, if he argues, it will cause trouble, blah, blah, blah. Whereas it's not supposed to be like that. Now, when this child is feeling inferior and cannot defend himself, or cannot defend Islam, what happens? He tends to hide his identity. His identity becomes a problem. 
this child will rather remove his name from his CV that is Abdul Hamid and write Abai Olu Adam Lola so that he is not being victimized by um, the companies that, that want to recruit. But I, would, I have to, this to say to you, whatever truly belongs to you, no matter how far it goes, no matter how far it goes, it will, only, it will always be yours. If it is that oil company you are going to work, if it will take you 10 years, you will get it and you will live large. So please be proud of your name, be proud of your hijab, be proud of, to be a Muslim. When they call, we, 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 we go for events and they say um, opening prayer. You see, it is the Christians that will jump up to pray. And we Muslims are just there, we will not even, we will not want to show ourselves. Even if, even if it's only fatia that I can say, please, let's, let's, let's be proud of our religion. This is our religion. And um, the first lecturer was talking about Holocaust. Before the Holocaust comes to Nigeria, let's start bracing up for the Holocaust too. Because it's just a matter of time before they start penetrating us. And God forbid, I know they won't succeed because by the time we that are seated here, we spread this gospel to every other Muslim brothers and sisters out there. We, we, we will all fight this Holocaust that is coming our way, inshallah. Now, still talking about identity. There is this verse in the Quran, um, Quran 5 verse 32, that says that when you save a life, you save mankind. Now, there are many ways you can read meaning to that. You can be a doctor, you are saving lives, and you are actually saving mankind. You can also be a sister, wearing a job, and has a friend that doesn't wear a job, and you are, and you are persistently encouraging her to wear a job. Now, what you are doing is this. You are going to make her a better make the generation she's going to born a better Muslim. Because if that sister without a job is hiding her identity on the name of, she doesn't want to be identified as a Muslim. If that sister goes on, get married, and give birth, it means that the children too, they will know about Islam. Now, having said this, moving on to the next um, challenge is being faced by Muslim youth. We'll talk about peer pressure. Now, peer pressure are in two ways. Is either positive or negative. Positive is when the pressure is come from your fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. Negative is when it's come from the non-Muslims. Now, the, the one, now I'm, I'm going to be using a youth that is non-knowledgeable as an example. A youth that is non-knowledgeable definitely not want to... No, we definitely be moving with those non-Muslims, why? So that they don't victimize him, so to say. Instead of moving with Muslims who are, according to Quran 3 verse 110, I'll continue quoting this, are the best of creation. Now, if you know that you are the best of creation, why would you rather deal with those on the, or those on the other side? Why would, you have, why would you make friends with those on the other side? Now, there are two ways to this thing. The childhood of this child, uh, from, from the cradle, if the parents, like, um, we have parents who send their children to school and then they will employ our fathers to come to the house to still come and teach the child. I will employ our parents and should please expose our children. Let them be street wise. Let me use that in, in quote. Allow them to go to Islamic, I mean, Ileko. Yes, that's the word. Ileko. Let them go to Ileko. Why should they go to Ileko if they are going to Methodist primary secondary school? No problem. It, we, God, um, um, the prophet Allah said, said we should go as far as China to go and learn about uh, um, knowledge, to go and seek for knowledge. If it, if, it, if it means you sending your child to any Christian school, no problem. But make that child go to an Islamic school. Why? Because if you make friends with fellow Muslim brothers, now when you are making friends with, with um, Muslims from your cradle, by the time you grow up, you won't have problem relating with Muslims. You won't have problem wearing hijab because while you are in Lake, everybody is wearing hijab. So why won't you wear hijab? When you enter the theater institution, my advice to those jambites is the first place you should identify with is the mocks. And for those that will be going to serve that's in November, so to say, there's, there's always this problem when you go to camp. You will never see a Muslim banner, but there's always a mocks in the camp. In the camp sorry. Please en en ensure that you identify with Muslims when you get to the camp. Because they are the ones that can protect your interests when you get to the camp. And for those of you in the university too, there's MSS, there's MSS to protect you. So please, we need to, we need to be relating with our fellow Muslim brothers because they are the best people that we can relate with. If we relate with those on the other side, they will drift us away from our religion. Now, having said this, moving on to the next side, we're talking about um, social life. Now, 
this is not really the fault of the youth, so to say. We have a lot of Muslim societies. How many Muslim, how many Muslim societies can boast of having event centers like Ikoi Club or Lagos Country Club, where people can relax, relate with each other, and network? We don't have. Okay, I think there's. I mean, there's a mosque in Lekki in Phase One. I heard. I've not been there before. I heard it has lucrative. I mean, a recreative center where people can really relate. We need our mosques to be built in that way. Fine, they've already been built, we don't have them. But we now have a lot of Islamic groups. It is time for our Islamic groups to start, to start creating events that will attract even the non-committed Muslims to Islam. Because what, what, what is really happening to these non-committed Muslims is not because they don't want to become committed. They are actually scared because there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of, I'm like, how will I put it? They are confused, so to say. They need an avenue where Somebody will, will, will call them together, teach them the basic before you start taking them ahead. You see, if, if, if we don't create these events, it, it does not have to be strictly Islamic, you know, um, teachings and all that. We can drift to talking about life, single forum, having marriage forum, trying to attract people to events that are really interesting so that these youths can actually, uh, you know, flow with us. If we don't do this, very soon these non-committed Muslims will become worse than non-committed and well, God, God forbid, I pray they don't go to the other side. We, we need to really gear up and that's one of the reasons why Bimai is here to start. We're here to stay. We are here to attract the teens and the young adults. Our mission, as I said earlier, and as it is in your, it's, it's in your, is to empower Muslim youth with, with, uh, with self-developing programs that will help them become better Muslims. Now, after dealing with the social life, move on to the next slide, which is which is empowerment. This is still on the hands of our social, I mean, our Islamic societies. A lot of Muslims are leaving universities and they are searching for job. While we are searching for job, why can't we look for a, a job that we can do with our hand? What they call our um, Isha'a war, yes? Isha'a war, that's what they call it. So that we can use that to, you know, to better our, our life as Muslims. If you're a tailor and you're sewing for almost 100 and plus people, there's nothing bad in it. If you're a cobbler and you're making shoes, there's nothing bad in it. Fine, you've been to the university. What your university degree is going to do for you is that you're going to be fine. You're not going to be like the street cobbler. No, you'll be a, you'll be a touched cobbler. So to, let me use that word, a touched cobbler. But this youth cannot empower himself because he's not financially capable. We need the society at large to please help us to empower these youths. Now, if you look at your, your flyer, there, there, there is a space there where you can contact us and we, we would like to get the feedback from all of you. So, um, I will round up by saying that please, we Muslim youths, the, the major problem that we are having is that we are not seeking knowledge. We should be aggressive about seeking knowledge. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Now, I would like to um, entertain two questions, just two questions because of time constraint. Two questions for our lecturer. Do we have any questions? Okay, please come, come up here, sir. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, we, I really enjoy our scholars, I mean, our lecturer today. Please, my question is simply, sorry. Please, our lecturer today, please, can you please shed more light on, on what happened before um, Palestinian? Well, I read a story about how the Israel tried so I mean, create or let's say try to create a uh, empty or something like selfish among the Arabs who live in the in the Palestinian against the Aliyah. The song of Aliyah, I can't remember his name. Apart from that, then okay. Then the second question is that what advice? I mean, can you guide us? We want to know more better about the war, new world order, about the Holocaust, about the Illuminati's how to know more 
teach information about them on our own self no because you cannot say much you only say brief and this thing in fact it takes a lot of time it's a daily search daily search daily information that we need so long we can I think we are all uh, settled from uh, Salat Asri. May Allah accept it from us. May Allah spare our life to witness the more group and the shy and the rest of the days of Ramadan. The question asked is about our topic for those who are not here before. Our talk topic of the first lecture was or is Holocaust in the lines of Muslims. How can we stop it? Or who will stop the tide? So the question now was asking, what did Israel do to capture Palestine? What did they do? I was not having the time. Because the lecture we are, even the write-ups that will be published in the book, in the magazine of the AIC, is so lengthy. Because if you want to cover, if you want to make it meaningful, you have to touch so many angles. So that's why I just do a lot of summary. But let me quickly just mention, I won't be able to satisfy you. One of the things they did was, like I said, they were driven away from Germany. Okay? They were driven away from Russia. They were deprived in so many countries. Germany, the first country that had pity for them was France. And the only place where they were safe, very relatively safe, were the homes of the Muslims. But when they were going to Palestine, like I said, it was a decision by the Jews. Whether they like it or whether they don't like it, that they are going to be established in Palestine. I told you in my mention, in my submission, they first of all started buying the lands. They bought the land. Next to buying the land was to engaging themselves in establishing schools. They were establishing schools. The policy was under Ottoman Empire at that time. The Ottoman Empire headquarters was in Turkey. So they were, they were even pretentiously behaving very, very submissively to the Ottoman Empire. So they were begging the empire to grant them the opportunity to establish school. They established school. They were begging the empire to allow them to build houses gradually. They were given. Meanwhile, while this thing was going on, they were creating silently and secretly tension among the Arabs, among the Muslims, to break up the Ottoman Empire. So they were doing this silently. And on the other hand, and that is also a very important note, Britain was the first country that announced their support officially to support establishment of Israel in Palestine. And they were budgeting for them. Gradually too, you know they were all over the place. Because America also accepted them as refugees into the territory. They were forming the uh, clubs there. Gradually, they, they, there is a document, if you can. Except some of these things, very sensitive. Because if you are not careful, they can arrest you and they will punish you. As uh, we are talking like this, we don't know whether the essence are around, though, but we have given our life to God, honestly. As long as what we are saying is correct. There is what they call Israeli lobby. That, is, that was not the name they were bearing in America. So they were gathering in America. What they were doing was to make effort gradually to penetrate American governments. They were going gradually. Eventually, they captured the politics. Eventually, they captured the economies. And when they, when they could capture the American power, so that would be a boost to the project. So they were pumping money for drifts from other parts of the world into Palestine, pumping money into the project that is going on in Palestine. And that was how it started and it continues 
At the end of the Second World War, the German was debated and they imposed on German reparation. German had to pay a very huge amount of money to Jews. Such money is also part of the budget flow into the state of Israel. And at the end of the day, after all, whatever you contribute in UNO, eh, America constitutes 25% of the contribution. And now they have captured America. So UNO will support them on so many matters. Even when they pass the resolution at the end of the day, that look, let's partition this place. Let's allow the Palestinians to be their own on their own. Let you be on their own. The Israelis say no. The Israelis continue to occupy the territory of the Palestine. Even the, when the partition of the Palestine that did not belong to them had been concluded. They still occupied Gaza. Golan Heights. Okay? And they were building. Go and look at it. At least if you are the type that watch TV. You can see the news. You see a high-rising building that has been built by the Israelis on the land of the Palestine. What I'm saying is saying that a huge global and international backup is for Israel from US, from Britain, from all over the world so that they remain formidable and nothing can happen to them. The only thing that will eventually defeat the Israelis you see, Obama went to Israel recently, Israel, Israel, Israel recently, and he was saying, before he was talking to Palestine, he was saying, between us and you, there's a historical agenda, historical tie that will never end. We were with you, you are with us. The most very complex issues, projects, activities in the world by America, you can only see at the front line a Jew. They are, they are instruments. Because whether we like it or not, Allah has given them a lot of knowledge, a lot of skill. But they bastardize the grace of Allah because they are the most wicked people on the land. So let me carry on. Thank you. Having known all the problems that uh, the Muslims are facing on this uh, era that we have, from the lecture that I, from what I can derive from the lecturer, is is that he is able to tell us the problems that these Muslim people are facing, and he did not give us the solutions, because as I'm as I'm listening to the lecture, I'm expecting him to say, "You Muslims, this is what you should do." so that you will fight against this holocaust in the land of Muslims. We cannot continue to be recapping the problems, recapping the problems, saying what is happening. But what exactly is what, uh, what exactly are we going to do to fight against this holocaust in the lands of Muslims? Are we going to fold our arms in Nigeria and be looking at the Muslim countries facing this problem? I need these exact solutions. What exactly do you want the Muslims to do? Well, I want to be brief. I will say to tell you some of the things we should do. Maybe you did not listen to me. But you see, the lecture is like this. Oh, Holocaust in the lands of the Muslim. Who will stop the tide? They never ask me to tell the audience what we must do. <laughs> ah, you can see. So I'm on defense. They never ask me to tell, tell you what you should do. But you know what you should do. And I mentioned some. Honestly, in darkness, Islam made the world, and Islam turned the world into enlightenment. We should look at the history of Islam. How? Because the Jews were already there before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. The atrocities were already there before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. How did he do it? One of the things I will tell my sister and all, and all others: Let us read our history to know our history tells us how we solve our problems. One of the things that we get is that first and foremost, we must know the problem. Don't say, don't you take, we talk about our problem. You 
you should continue to talk about our problem because every day new problem emerges. Every day new problem emerges. Let me quickly mention it because of the lecturer. Every day new problem emerges. I read two weeks ago now. Pressure is too so much on Jonathan now, so that the Nigerian government must legalize homosexuality. So I will not tell you this. If I just tell you that homosexuality is around the corner, I've helped you. So we must continue to tell ourselves the problem we're facing. Homosexuality is around the corner. And the government it doesn't take them anything. It's just to bribe the senators and the representatives. And they will pass the law, they pass the law every day, or you they never consult you. So we must read our history. We must go back to the history. The way to go back to history is to become students of Islam. One lie and lie. One of the major problems that is causing trouble for the Muslims in the world is because we have stopped being students. Some of us do not even have enough. We project ourselves as alphas. And then we remain happy. Some of us could read Quran, but we do not know the meaning. Just like reading the Greek. We should know Islam. We should know the problem. Then we know Islam. Islam will tell you how to go about it. I tell you, every problem, there is always a solution in Islam. So, me, one of the major problems, a major solution is knowledge. Rediscovering Muslim in the world of knowledge. May Allah save us. There are so many other things we could do, but not everything we can tell in the open. So, like,